My name is Simon, and I'm the head of user experience design in no isolation. And we make uh, hardware products uh, because we believe that a lot of the mainstream technologies that we use today uh, don't fit everyone, and uh, in certain cases, exclude uh, certain groups of people. So I want you to just take a second and imagine your grandparents, for instance. Uh, you've set up an Instagram account for them, and you want them to follow along on your daily life. And you've given them a tablet. They bring it up. And uh, what's the pin code again? Can't really remember it. Uh, it's on that post-it note in a jar in the shelf. They find it, log on, and there's an update on the OS. They need an Apple ID. Don't remember what that is. They manage to find it, and they open the Instagram app. and. Suddenly, there's an update there, too, so they've been logged out. And there are a lot of these small barriers that, to us, might seem trivial. But for, for instance, seniors uh, end up making them less motivated and unlikely to use these products. So we create tailored communication tools to put an end on loneliness. And a lot of companies and a lot of people uh, see this process as sort of like a cumbersome thing. It's expensive. And it's also seen as difficult to scale, which is why we ended up doing that. Because we truly believe that if technology is designed correctly and it is used correctly, uh, a lot of people can benefit from being on these uh, services and utilizing this. So the first two products that we have developed uh, are called Comp, which is a one-button computer for seniors who are unable to use current technological uh, devices today. And the other product is AV1, which is an avatar robot for children with long-term illness who have to spend uh, months or maybe years away from school. So they're technically quite uh, similar to other products. There's nothing revolutionizing, no AI or machine learning uh, uh, crazy stuff going on in these products. But they're designed in a way that makes these users actually able to use them, uh, which is sort of what we do. So I thought I'd show a small video of uh, AV1 just to give you an impression. <laughs> so you probably realize making hardware is uh, quite difficult, and it usually takes like years to, to end up with a hardware product. Uh, but we try to make stuff within one year, which I think is what separates us from a lot of other people. And uh, this is basically how we do it. If you're a product developer or a designer, this will probably look uh, quite familiar. So we actually spend most of our time uh, up front understanding the context that we work in, uh, engaging with the users, uh, doing user testings, in-depth interviews, going on site, as uh, has been mentioned here before. Then we rapidly prototype the first concepts and get them out in the hands of the users so we can sit with them and get the feedback on how everything works. And while we validate the concept with them, do all the adjustments, we start in parallel sort of to make 
make a first concept, uh, concept launch, uh, which I'll mention a bit uh, later. So obviously, we do have some benefits from being a startup uh, or now a scale-up because we're a quite small team and the organizational structure is very flat. That enables us to make decisions very quickly. Uh, it also allows us to engage the entire team. And we're also like a young and vibrant uh, environment, working environment. So everyone uh, puts all their efforts into, into everything we do. And obviously, the most important thing is that everyone who works in our company truly, truly cares about our mission and what we try to achieve, which is to end loneliness and social isolation. So in doing so, we need to ensure that everyone working in our company understands the user group and why we make the products the way we do. Because often with the designs that we propose, they're quite sort of unconventional from what you would typically uh, get from a, a solution. Uh, so we need everyone to understand why we do what we do. And also, as has been mentioned, we're not the user group. Uh, which is something we need to, to realize. And when we try to propose, there are a lot of new technologies and cool stuff that we, we could do to be sort of like trendy, but we always need to focus on what our users want. Uh, so for seniors, for instance, a lot of the people have suggested, oh, you should do uh, text uh, or voice recognition. And I don't know if you've heard all the different peculiar Norwegian dialects that exist. Uh, all over the country, uh, but trying to get uh, voice recognition from uh, some of the seniors uh, with these peculiar dialects will never work. Uh, so we need to understand the user group and focus on that. Also, as has been mentioned, we need to realize that technology does not exist in a vacuum. So regardless of how much we design something, once we put it out in the hands of our users, and they, uh, for instance, with the AV1, we place it in the school. All the different schools have different routines. Uh, they use the product in different ways, which is something we need to take into consideration. And we need to enable those kind of use cases with our design. And that means particularly that we need to cater for both high secure products. Uh, they need to be uh, very, very secure. Uh, these are vulnerable groups in vulnerable situations, but they also need to be super easy to use so that we, uh, we remove any hassle from, for instance, the teachers. And I don't know if any of you have heard about this term. It's a term called uh, leathery fingers, uh, which basically just means uh, dry fingertips. And it's highly common among uh, older adults uh, over 80 that your fingers simply get dry. What that does is that when you try to tap on, for instance, a touch screen on an iPad or a smartphone, it simply doesn't react to it. Uh, so for many seniors, even though they would be able to use an iPad or use the apps and use social media, the device in itself won't allow them to, to use it because it won't react to their fingers. So as I said, we are not a user, and we need to understand all these con uh, concepts and uh, understand the limitations and the motivations of our users. So we do spend a lot of time sitting along with, for instance, uh, older adults uh, trying to understand uh, what they want. For instance, this woman, she was one of the first who tried one of the prototypes that you see from, from the product comp. And what we didn't realize, we had these on-screen notifications. So then when you switch the product off, uh, it would say, like, yeah, you've received one new, one new photo, or someone tried to call you while the, while the device was off. Uh, she, on the other hand, said, but I switched it off. Uh, so she went and pulled the plug. Uh, on the device itself, and completely forgot about it and never pulled the plug back in, uh, which are these things that we might not have done, uh, but we need to, to understand in order to, to design products properly. As has also been mentioned, we also believe that everyone in the, in the company needs to understand our user groups. And we have done that by allowing everyone to participate in the concept development when we start with new product developments. So we tackle sort of one target group at a time, uh, doing, for instance, design sprints or other, other activities and then prototyping different solutions. And we let the entire team, everyone from sales to marketing or engineering teams, everyone participates in these activities. So here you can see our mechanical engineer having uh, the time of her life doing a sort of Wizard of Oz uh, prototype uh, thing uh, where they simulated how the, how the entire prototype should work with some seniors. Also here you can see our research team and developers uh, trying different, uh, different solutions. And I really think that this is very important because it's 
always different to get a first-hand experience of how something works and uh, what the limitations of our users are and how they perceive potential products than being told by the UX department. So now, even though they don't participate in this all the time, we can't keep uh, on involving everyone forever, they still remember and understand what we're talking about when we've done a user test and come back with, with the results. Particularly important with developing hardware, I think it's important to utilize all the new technologies that we have available today, which allows us to, to get prototypes out fast and start sort of the production line uh, way before uh, we typically would do. So for Comp, this is the, the first prototype we made. It's basically just a computer screen with a Raspberry Pi compute module, and we uh, put some cameras and microphones on it uh, and shipped it out to, to the customers. And uh, this allows us to test sort of the, the core concept without having to worry about all the industrial design and how this should be, be developed and, and uh, going into assembly line. So it definitely is possible to grow a business from tailored tools, uh, which is sort of my, my takeaway from this. Uh, this has been sort of mentioned by... Uh, uh, yeah, in the previous talk, uh, but uh, there are, there's a huge market within, for instance, seniors and also other, other groups requiring tailored communication tools. Uh, so as we see here, uh, 248 million people are over 80 years and 87% do not use ICT, uh, which is a huge potential if you manage to design something that they can actually use and that engages their family and, uh, and the organizations around them. Uh, can have a huge impact on their lives. For us, this means in the past few, uh, in last year, uh, we actually grew to be uh, 58 full-time employees. We're about 65 in total. Uh, we have three offices uh, in, in Europe, one in Oslo, in Amsterdam, and in London. 52% uh, of our company works with the R&D. Uh, 43 are female, and we have 12 different nationalities represented. And this is also super important for us working with inclusive design that we also have uh, different nationalities and different groups of people represented in our company. Uh, so we're gonna keep trying to push these stats even further. And even though working with these vulnerable groups, which we'll talk a little bit more about in the Fireside chat, is, uh, is quite challenging uh, at times, uh, it's all worth it when you get uh, quotes like uh, this from, from our user. Uh, who had never used any computers or had been using any video call services at all, and suddenly they felt like they were traveling the world. Thank you.